We know that the entirety of the scriptures as we have them were written in somewhere between 1,000 to about 1,400 years. And across the scriptures, we hear the same themes and sometimes the same stories told and retold, so that when they would be spoken in a later iteration, or read, read, read out in a later iteration, they would have struck people's ears. They would have said, I know that. And that's what we get today a little bit between what is a major book of the Old Testament and one of the Gospels. We have in the story of Isaiah a story of the people of Israel working back towards Jerusalem. Their time of exile is over. Their time of basically captivity in Babylon is done, and there's a promise for them to go home. And there's a promise that speaks of God and God's desire to be reunited with them. And the voice of the prophet crying in the wilderness to make straight a way, to level the high points, the mountains, to raise up the valleys so there can be a highway, a superhighway, a motorway without motors between Babylon and the people and God so that the people can have a straight access to God and God can have an access to them because God's desire is so great to be reunited with his people. It's a powerful image and one that moved the people of Israel for centuries. And so to have John the Baptist standing out in the wilderness proclaiming the same message, using the same words to prepare your way, to prepare a way for the Lord, to make those paths straight, resonated with the people. It's interesting, as Mark has it, the, word, the words are a little different. That Isaiah had the, the highway, the, the super road being built in the wilderness, and yet John stands in the wilderness crying to people who are not in the wilderness themselves, or talk, crying to the people of Jerusalem, who are coming flocking out to see him, and it wouldn't have been easy, because the Jordan doesn't flow anywhere close to Jerusalem. But people were reporting there's a man out there saying important things. There's a man out there speaking to our hearts. There's a man calling us to transformation. And so they flock to him. And he reminds them, that the wilderness is there, it's there in their hearts, it's there in the city they live in, because they have become distant from God. They have forgotten the depth of the relationship God is calling them to. And to repent, repent of their sins, so they can walk as one with their Heavenly Father. Further on in this reading in, from Isaiah, we have these beautiful words that talk about God and God's advent, God's coming. Here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arms subduing all things. The prize of victory is his. The trophies, his trophies all go before him. This is an image of a victorious king, a powerful king, someone who has won the battles. And then the very next sentence, referring to the very same God, says he is like a shepherd, feeding his flock, gathering his lambs in his arms, holding them against his breath, breast, and leading them to their rest. The same, very same God, who is the all-powerful conquering king, is the God who nurtures and holds his people close. And that is the message picked up by John, who speaks to one coming much more powerfully than him. He said, do not mistake me for the message. I am but the messenger, pointing to one who is to come, who will unite all things together in himself. Our reading from the second letter of St. Peter is interesting because it comes from the very tail end of any of the scriptural books. And it says, 
that that which we thought was happening hasn't happened yet. These are lines that have been being stated over 2,000 years. We're still waiting for the fullness of the gift. We're still waiting for the complete sense of God's victory. But hopefully, if we're dutiful to God, if we maintain that sense of holiness Peter is calling us to, we will begin to experience and will experience ever more fully the peace and the care and the tender compassion of God in our hearts. Yes, we celebrate Christ the King. Yes, we celebrate, celebrate that triumphal moment when God will reign on high with, with Jesus at his right hand. But we do so knowing that he came as one like us. He came into the manger. He came as a holy, innocent person, holy with a W, to show us what holiness means and to lead us back to that full union that God has longed for since long before this description in the prophet Isaiah. We are weeks away from celebrating the fullness of what we believe, the fullness of that incarnation when Christ came as one like us. We celebrate the babe in the manger. Many years ago, Sister Madaliva Wolf, the longtime president of St. Mary's College, the woman's college next to the University of Notre Dame and Notre Dame, Indiana, was not only a university administrator when she died, proclaimed one of the most important women in the, in the United States by a Time magazine, was a poet. And she wrote about that scene that we will be celebrating in just a week or two. God has most simple ways. He likes a stable's covering and little lambs that shepherds bring. His majesty aside he lays, you would not know he is a king. He has such humble ways. See where he lies, quite sweet and small, a baby in an ox's stall, smiling to meet his mother's gaze. You could not fear this God at all. He has such tender ways. But look you how the heavens blaze, and hark you what angelic praise resounds. Indeed, he is a king. And these be godlike ways.